First of all, if you're not familiar with CliffX, you can download and learn more about it on our forum. This mode sets up the matrix for triggering CliffX actions, and you get to determine the actions to trigger as well as the LED colors to use. In this way, you can create layouts that make sense for your workflow and that are easy for you to remember. And these can be as simple or as complex as you like. I'd recommend starting out with just a few assignments, getting comfortable with those, and then adding more. You'll specify the actions and LED colors to use in the modes associated settings file. Now this is a mutable mode. That means that you can have multiple instances of this mode. And each instance has its own settings file, so it can trigger entirely different actions and use entirely different layouts. As an example, here I have four instances of the mode. Each of these triggers different sets of actions, and the name of each indicates the sort of actions that triggers. Upon switching between these instances, the status bar will show the name of the selected instance. For this example, I'm using miscellaneous settings to give you an idea of what you can do with this mode. First, I've got some record-related actions. I can toggle session record and arrangement record, toggle the metronome, turn global quantization on and off, and stop playback. Here I can toggle between clip and track view, as well as session and arrangement view. I can load specific devices on the selected track, control hot swapping for the selected device, toggle the state of the browser, and navigate between devices. On the seventh row, I've got some specialized settings. The first button is an example of using an off action list. Each button can trigger two action lists, one when the button is pressed, called the on action list, and another when the button is released, called the off action list. So in this case, when I press the button, it's gonna trigger device off, and when I release it, it's gonna trigger device on. So it's essentially a momentary on off switch. The last button here is using a P sequence action list. A P sequence will step through the action list and perform the actions one at a time each time the button is pressed. So in this case, the first time I press it, it'll randomize the device, the second time it'll reset the device, and then the third time it'll wrap back around and randomize the device again. I wanna show you just one more action because I think it's extremely useful in a lot of different use cases, and it sort of slipped in under the radar a couple of years ago, so even some seasoned CliffX users aren't aware of it. This action will insert automation points for the parameters that you specify. In this case, I wanted to insert automation points for all of the devices on the track. In this way, each clip can have entirely different device settings. So this is very useful for both effects and instruments. So to use this action, first I'll insert a clip and then duplicate it. In the first clip, I'll add automation points for the current device settings. Now I'll randomize both devices. And in the second clip, I'll capture these settings. Now when I play these clips, the parameters jump to the values that I stored in each clip. The matrix accessory buttons can store and recall CliffX snapshots. Each instance of the mode can store and recall its own snapshots. And these snapshots are actually stored along with the set. To store a snapshot, you just press any of the unlit buttons. Now I'll chain some parameters around, and then store another snapshot. And now I can jump between these two snapshots. By default, the standard CliffX snap action will be used. That'll store the volume, pan, and send settings of all the tracks in the set, as well as the settings of the first device on each track. You can change that in the settings file of each instance of this mode. This setting here allows you to specify which tracks the action should apply to. You can choose all for all the tracks in the set or current for the current track. This setting here allows you to specify the modifiers to use, and those determine the settings that'll be stored for each track. So for example, if you just want to store device settings, you can use something like dev or dev all here. And this supports all the modifiers that are available in CliffX. You can delete a snapshot by holding down shift and pressing the button associated with the snapshot you want to delete. If the controller has a delete button, you'll use that instead of shift. And finally, the arrow buttons are used for basic navigation.